welcome back to the shop. So today I was actually planning on making the back plate for the four jaw chuck that's going to be mounted to the 13 inch salt bend. Uh, one of my viewers had generously uh, cut me off a slice of cast iron uh, that's perfect size to make the back plate for. Fortunately, I realized and completely forgot that I am missing the carriage lock on the 13. So the plan was to do the threading and the hole on the 13 inch, uh, on the 9 inch lathe, mount it to the 13 inch and face the front off. Well the problem is, is I actually need that carriage lock to be able to lock the carriage so that as I'm facing the front uh, the carriage doesn't get pushed off and I end up with a curved uh, concave or convex surface. So decided, well we'll just make the carriage lock. So luckily I was able to find some pictures of the carriage lock that goes on these 13s from the Practical Machinist forms and uh, with basic dimensions, so these are those. Okay, so as you can see, there are quite a few dimensions there that are missing. So, I decided, since I, already, I had to make two of these because I had promised somebody one, I went ahead and made one and kind of inferred the, uh, the measurements from the, from the pictures, did some measurements of my own on the carriage, and, you know, some common sense and some educated guessing. We came out with one that works perfectly fine. And the measurements are actually pretty good. The missing measurements, in all honesty, really aren't that critical. And the angles aren't that critical, but we came out with the technique that made it perfectly fine. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of features and a lot of angles and a lot of different things on this carriage lock, unlike the 9-inch lathe that is literally just uh, like a notched plate with a pin. So why don't we go over to the lathe real quick, and I'll just show you exactly why we need all these features on this part. Okay, so right where it's going to sit is right in this area here, and we have a few obstacles in our way. As you can see, we have this casting here that has a dovetail. This is where the, um, the half nuts ride. There's a half nut, there's a, a gib plate down here, so it's machined flat right here, but you can see we have this cast surface. Now also here we actually have the, uh, the little gib type deal where the half nuts ride. We also have to clear that. So basically what happens is, is this part here clamps underneath the bed and this part here clamps to the underside of the actual carriage. When you draw up the bolt, it basically lifts this up and just locks the carriage. This angle here is there to clear this little gib plate here. This notch right there is there to clear this side of the casting. And this little angle here in this rib is there to give this front foot strength so that you don't snap it off because you can see if we didn't have that then we'd have this large piece sticking up and then the thread in here is 3 8 uh, 3 8 thread now the hole is just a hair under uh, 7 16 you could drill it out for 7 16 but actually having a little bit of slop in that in that hole is a good thing in this case because it will allow for any misalignment of this and let it shift around and settle where it wants to settle so uh, I need two hands to get this in, so let me just get it in there real quick and you can kind of see how it fits. Okay, so you can see it in place there. And what it does is pulls right up against the bed and also the underside of the carriage. And you can see that that notch right there is there to clear that casting. And if I get you down here, maybe you can or can't see in there, but that's the way it sits there. Okay, hopefully I can get this all in frame. So I have this all laid out. They, in another picture, they tell you the width of the pads. So we have that laid out first. That's what this line and this, and this line is. This line here is our center line. Now we know that this pad here has to be spelled 635,000, so we round up to 636. Then we divide by 2, and we subtract that distance from our center distance, and that will give us this line and this line. So from here to here is 635 thousandths. And we also know that that is the start of our notch. Now the length of the notch 
is just an educated guess. It ended up being roughly 600 thousandths. Works out perfectly fine, so that's the length of our notch. And as I said before, our pads will be here. Let me show you another picture here. Here is our notch that's going to go all the way down. And here's our 777 thousandths height. So what we're going to do first is set up in the mill. And we're going to notch this out. And then we can set this back up this way. Mill the whole top here except for this front pad. This front pad and this edge because this is a rib. This line right here is this rib. So we can mill out all of this to 777 thousandths. And then we can go and make our rib and do our angles. It's not too tough. It's just a matter of figuring out the measurements. And um, we're going to be doing lengths and stuff by calibrated eyeball. We're just using these scrap lines. More than adequate enough. Um, it doesn't really need to be supremely crazy accurate. It's just a bed clamp. So milling to these lines uh, will be perfectly acceptable. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cutout on the side. So that's this section right here. And we're going to do it to the scrap lines uh, lengthwise. In our depth, is, we're going to be taking 340 thousandths off of this, and I'll just do it in 50 thousandths increments, which is kind of a little shallow. I could take more, um, but I just like, you know, I my tooling costs more than my time, so I like to take it easy on my tooling, if at all possible, so that's why I'm doing it slow, but I could definitely do it faster. But what I'm going to be using right now is one of the Niagara cutters that was given to me along with a lot of the other YouTube creators and uh, there are the numbers on it. It's our half inch roughing with the coating and it, these actually work really well. So what we'll do is just bring the quill down, touch and then back off a little bit and then we'll just raise the knee until I get a cut. Just nicking right there. I'm gonna zero my knee. I turn on my digital readout here. I'm gonna bring that end mill, and we're just gonna eyeball the end of that scribe line there. Good right there. And I'm just going to zero my readout and then we can come back to that measurement. Okay, so our cutter is going in this direction here. We don't want to climb cut or we want to avoid one if at all possible. Alright, it's going to take 50.
Okay, so now our notch is done. What we're going to do is slip it upright and we're going to take this area here down to size. So from here up until this little ramp. All right, get everything cleaned up there. We're all deburred. Now, our plan is right now is to take this center, this line right here and everything this side of that line is going to be taken down to our 777 thousandths width. That will basically leave all this chunk raised up and then this little section scribed right here will end up being our web. So, put this back in. And let me just grab my calculator real quick. So we know our width right now is one inch, 250 thousandths. We want to bring that down to 777 thousandths. So we got to take 473 thousandths uh, off of that block. We're going to do it in 50 thousandths increments. And uh, I also have uh, a scribe line there as a cheater, so I can't screw up. Raise up the table until I make a mark. And right there, you can set zero on my knee dial. And we're just going to eyeball this over to our scribe line. good to me. We're going to zero our digital readout so we can come back to that. And we're going to start taking that down. Now I could probably just use a bigger, bigger end mill in there, but um, I'll be using the half inch later on, so it's just going to take me one, one extra pass, so I'm just going to leave it in there.
Okay, so now I have, bring it into frame here, that side down to this width here. This step is 75,000, so I'm going to come back to my zero here and just plunge down um, 75 thousandths and take another cut and that'll give me my relief oh, sorry hard to see where I'm going that'll give me my relief in the middle here and then we can just nibble this piece and then this piece Fifty. Alrighty, so now that lip is made, that step right here. Now I can take this piece here. Okay, so that is this piece taken off here. Now I just need to make this, take this piece out of the middle here. And all I need to do now is we'll just come back up. We'll line up our scribe lines again. We can get set zero on our digital readout. So I know where the end of both sections is. And then, um, well right now, let me just set a zero on my dial here on my knee. So that way there I know where to stop and we'll take out that little chunk. So, come back up. Okay, so we're over it there, we'll start it up. Crank up the knee until we touch.
Okay. So now that pocket is formed, all we need to do is make this angle and that angle. Okay, so what I did is put it in the vise, tilted sideways a little bit, use this as a straight edge, and just eyeball line that up till it was level. Again, we're not really, this, this isn't going into spacecraft or anything, so it doesn't have to be amazingly accurate. Calibrated eyeball, good enough. Okay, so that's where we're going to leave it. We got a little bit of a straight vertical on the edge, like a little witness mark. I'm going to leave all that there. And uh, let me just get a file real quick. Let me actually bring this into the camera area. Let me get a file real quick. I'm going to just deburr this and we'll switch it around. Okay, so we have our other line parallel with our jaws there. And we're just going to take it down to it. Okay, so that's that. Now there's just one more little operation to do. Get some of these chips out of the way. And that is to brush off these parallels. Put that back in that way. And all we're gonna do is relieve the thickness of this web here, 75 thousandths from the top, to make a little step.
And there it is. Done. Okay, so here's the one that I just made. And here's the one that I made earlier. And if we put them side by side, you can see they're pretty much the same. So now, what we need to do is pop this sucker in place here. And it fits right in the recess. You can see it clears everything nice. And all the, this is going to somebody. So I don't want to drill the hole just because, drill and tap the hole just because they're is a distinct possibility that there could be some differences between my lathe and his. I mean, these were all hand-fitted, um, so it could be slightly off. So rather than run into the issue where it spoil a pot because the hole's a little bit off, he can very easily mark his and drill and tap it. And you can see we fit in there nice with touching the end of the bed. We're slightly below the surface of this here, so when it draws up, it'll draw up against the bed and also the inside of the um, the carriage there and lock it to it. Lock, lock the bed and the carriage together. So this is the one that I'll be using. And you can see we have the same type of fit. Now the only thing I did to this one is I just Took a file and rounded all these corners off just to make sure that, you know, kind of match the, the radius in here and just, you know, make sure it doesn't catch anything or nothing gets caught on this edge or anything. And, he, and I suggest he's more than welcome to, to just round this off and do what he needs to do. But the basic shape is there for him. Easy enough for a, um, to drill that hole, to mark it with a marker, uh, drill with the drill press, tap it, put the bolt in there. So, now... I don't profess to be any sort of machinist by any means, so this part could probably be made a lot faster and in probably fewer setups by somebody else. This just so happens to be what worked for me, and I took one section of it at a time. I, you can you saw that I split each thing up in sections. I could probably have done more than one section at the same time, like this piece here could have probably milled all that out as one piece, but then again, you know, you have more of a chance to screw up. So I just took my time and did it in a production environment. Obviously that wouldn't fly, but me and my, me in my shop making this part, I could take as long as I want to do it. So I'd rather take a little bit more time and not screw up than try to do it faster and screw it up. So either way, we got two usable pots and uh, this one will be shipped off to the person I promised it to. And I got to make a bolt and probably a little handle for the top of mine, which may be a subject for another quick video sometime later down the line. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the next one.